Well, good morning and welcome to the Grow Omaha Show. Glad that you have joined us today. I'm Jeff Beals, your co-host from NAI NP Dodge Commercial Real Estate Company. We're also brought to you by D&M Roofing. At any rate, this is the only show you're ever going to find that talks about the growth and development of the metro area. Loaded docket, as always, but without any further ado, it's time to bring on my co-host, the legendary real estate deal-making machine himself, live and in person, Trenton Maggid. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Jeff Beals. What a great week it has been. We'll take the weather. I know. It's it's nice fall weather. We're getting close to the holidays. So many things are happening in our town. Hey, I, I did something kind of fun. I want to give a shout out to the Nebraska Wesleyan baseball team in Lincoln. Okay, um, Okay. so Todd and Holly Schneidwin. Uh, Todd works with us at MP Dodge. Holly is the president of Eagle Mortgage, one of our big sponsors. Yep. They have a son who plays baseball for Wesleyan, and they invited uh, my wife Stephanie and me to a fundraiser yesterday at Top Golf. Great time and great weather to be out at Top Golf. Trent and I actually swung the club. I, I've done that already. No, it was too. ugly, ugly. Because I don't golf. You don't golf either. You keep the arm straight. Yeah. I, apparently, I need. <laughs> apparently, I need to take a few lessons. I actually connected with the ball. I was very surprised and proud of myself for hitting a few. I actually uh, won one of the games. Uh, total beginner's luck, but just let's just say thank God they don't have a big screen in which they put you know live performances Fan from some cam of them or something. Oh, or player, for the love of God, player cam. It was embarrassing. I, I could just see like wah, wah, wah. on the big screen. Here's Jeff Beals from Grow Omaha. That would have been unpleasant. But anyway, oh, out of that, fun. it was a lot of fun. So big weekend plans, Trenton. Absolutely, and uh, the. This is going to be an interesting Nebraska game, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know. I can't even watch them anymore. It's just it's so hard to watch that stuff and you know the the fumbling and the. You got to root for the mighty Huskers. Uh, at any rate, let's go into uh, a little piece of advice that we like to give you during the first part of the show, and that's get your fast cash app. Um, if you think about the best most dominant shopping property in the state of Nebraska. It's obviously Nebraska Crossing because there are so many retailers that only appear once in the entire state of Nebraska at Nebraska Crossing. And so you definitely want to go there. You definitely want to shop. Great place for Saturdays, you know, after the show is over, what have you. But when you're there, get your Fast Cash app. If you want to do that, have the Nebraska Crossing app, then you click Fast Cash on it, you hook up a credit card, then always use that credit card whenever you buy anything at any of the 70 retailers there. And if you do, you get 15% cash back that you can use at any of the Nebraska uh, Crossing retailers. Trenton, it's like free money. Absolutely. And the ho- apparently the holiday season has already started because you're starting to see people put up outdoor uh, decorations, maybe hopefully just because of the weather and they haven't turned them on yet, but uh, it's pretty early, ladies and gentlemen. You are correct. I have noticed that. In fact, both of my kids, they're teenagers, they went to little parties on Halloween, and I picked them up at about 9.30 or 10 o'clock. It was a school night. We can't stay out too late, right? So I picked them up, and I was going to one of the houses where one of the kids was, and Christmas outside decoration. I think basically what they did as soon as the last kid came by trick or treating, I know we always close around close right. around eight or eight thirty. I think they're like shut it down, flip the switch, Christmas lights. Can't have on. that void. Can't have that one week break. Well, let's talk about our news of the week. It's brought to you by Eagle Mortgage, EagleMortgageCompany.com. Physically, they're located at 114th and Davenport. But whether you talk with them online or in person, I can tell you this. They'll help you with conventional FHA or VA loans. Housing market still very robust right now. We are talking to all. I mean, I have my, my one of my sisters is moving into a new house in the next week or two. Signs I mean, are up. People are moving. People. I mean, th- it is not slowing down for the holidays. So, so folks, keep going. If you want to get a new house, just go. Start. Don't wait till uh, March. You can do it right now and get that pre-approval letter from Eagle Mortgage, EagleMortgageCompany.com. All right, we've got some fun stuff we're going to talk about first here, Trent and Maggot. Um, livability.com has come out with its top 100 best places to live in 2021. And our favorite city, Omaha, came in number 13 on the list. And uh, it's always kind of fun to see who else is on the list. So here's the top five in order. Madison, Wisconsin, Ann Arbor, Michigan, Overland Park, Kansas, Frederick, Maryland, and Charlottesville, Virginia. Who would have thought? 
Some other cities that are in our region, number nine, Colorado Springs, number 18, Lincoln, number 20, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, number 36, Aurora, Colorado, 40, Columbia, Missouri, 42, Fort Collins, Colorado, uh, 58, Iowa City, Ames, Iowa was 64, Fargo, North, North Dakota came in at 74, uh, let's see here, Des Moines, Iowa, number 93, Lawrence. So we're firing pretty well. Yeah, a lot of college towns, though. You even yeah. notice that a lot of college towns. There were some big cities on there. I saw Tampa, Pittsburgh, Cincinnati. They, because they need all that restaurant help, and they need all those college students to to, to uh, be employed. Well, let, let me tell you what the criteria were, and and that might give you a little bit of, a, of an idea about uh, how this all works out. Let's see here. Okay, I'm losing my spot on the screen, but while we're waiting for that to come up. Oh, there it is. Never mind. Okay. So here are the criteria that determined, and it's not showing us right now. But anyway, it said livability explores what makes um, medium-sized and small cities great places to live. Although I said like Tampa, Pittsburgh, Cincinnati were on there, so it wasn't really too small. Um, And they looked at um, community amenities, education, sustainability, transportation, housing, and the economy. They then uh, leveraged their expertise to develop city rankings on a variety of topics, uh, yada, yada, yada. Anyway, so we did very well with that. and we'll take uh, it. We will. We will. So another story that was, I thought, kind of interesting this week, Streck Laboratories, which is a nice, long-standing Omaha Great company. Local company. Uh, headquarters in La Vista. And uh, they employ about 400 people. Trenton, they are going to build their own apartment complex yeah about 80 was it 81 units or 80? yeah, about 84 84 units and this is over at the harrison hills development it's an industrial park uh but they bought 25 acres of land a couple of years ago they built a nice new i call it their second campus and uh, i've done a lot of work over there uh, 118th and harrison let's call it and uh, they're going to build th- call it workforce development and have apartments that they can um, I don't know if they're opening it up to outside people or is it just their employees? They're going to open it up to outside people if they can't fill it with their own people. And so so the priority is going to be for Streck employees. But, you know, 84 apartments, if they don't take up all of it, you got to fill it up with someone. True. And this is a workforce play right here, recruitment and retention. We We have talked at length over the years, but especially in the last – 18 months about a critical labor shortage. Yeah, this is definitely one of those solutions to uh, provide affordable housing to your employees, and some of them will take them up on it. Unemployment in Omaha is down to 1.7%, which is almost unfathomable and is so low. And so you're going to see, I believe, more and more of this. Streck might be the first to do this. I can't think of any other company that does this in town, but it's been done in a lot of other cities. You see stuff like this in the Silicon Valley areas where it's so expensive and you have to get resort communities in Colorado, ski areas and stuff like that to get, uh, you know, just to cut those commutes for some of those employees that can't afford to live in Aspen and Vail and places like that. I mean, I think about that. If you're a service worker, you know, waiting tables or busing tables in, in Vail or Aspen, you can't afford to live anywhere near that place unless you get some sort of special This would be deal. an interesting uh, exercise. Well, we always like to give you a little bit of national real estate news, courtesy of our friends at CoStar. And this week we have uh, information about restaurants. You know, Girl Omaha listeners will love restaurants. But Cheesecake Factory has uh, cooked up a plan to open 20 new restaurants in the coming year worldwide. And uh, so they're targeting 7% annual location growth. And this would uh, follow 14 restaurants that the California-based Cheesecake Factory has opened so far this year. Now, not all of them are called Cheesecake Factory. They have a few other brands. They have the high-end one called Grand Lux. Remember that? I've been to that one in Chicago. Yeah, and these are not small restaurants, ladies and gentlemen. You know, This is one of the few restaurants that has advertising in their menu. So you can imagine just to get through the menu, it's, it's, a, it's a course. Yeah, their menu is part catalog, part magazine. But a <laughs> couple of the other concepts that they have, North Italia and Flower Child, we do not have those in Omaha. They're going to open those. But anyway, I thought that's a good sign because during the pandemic, you would hear things about, oh, national restaurant chains are having such a tough time and we're worried about so many of them going out of business. And a lot of the local foodies would probably say, so 
that's great. Let's go local. But you got to have your national chain store. But I'll tell you, when you bring it local a little bit, I've got a regional restaurant that's looking for four to 7,000 square feet that wants existing restaurant space. So if, if you own a- Who is it? Rest, I can't tell you. If you own a restaurant, What's sorry. What's it start with? What does it rhyme with? If, if, if you have a restaurant, a Nova restaurant that maybe wants to get out or um, an existing restaurant space, four to, call 48,000 square feet, I want to hear from you. And then as part of the Terminal Entrance Roadway Expansion Project, a temporary entrance from Abbott Drive to the Epley International Airport Terminal will open on November 9th. So that's just a few days from now. What is that, Tuesday, I think it is? This temporary entrance is south of the old entrance and will remain in use until the permanent new entrance is open next summer. So I drove by Epley uh, yesterday during my Gromaha tour, partly because I got this press release, and I wanted to see, okay, are they getting it set up? They do a up? good job of informing people and in directional signs. They do, but wow. I mean, there is some serious uh, construction activity. And they're they're working on a ramp, like, like have a bridge that will take people straight up to the second or third floor of the south parking garage. That's pretty slick. For Express. So, I know uh, you're a fan of the North Tower. Oh, North Parking Garage is the only way to go. North Parking, yeah. But you know what? I'm not happy about this because right now, um, I noticed this when I took a flight a couple weeks ago, um, driving north on Abbott Drive, and there's a sign that said, South Parking Garage Renovation, use North Garage. I'm like, no, I don't want all those people in my garage. Because no, I'm used to, ever since the North opened, I always have the same spot. It's you, I have the same spot, so I was I don't have to remember where I parked. Well, there was someone in my spot. So I have to have a little chat with the airport authority. All right, that's your news of the week brought to you by Eagle Mortgage, eaglemortgagecompany.com. And when we come back, we're going to do one of those company spotlights. Trenton has a few guests here, and we're going to tell you about a company that's doing great things in Omaha. But in the meantime, you're listening to Grow Omaha, brought to you by DNM Roofing and NAI NP Dodge. We'll be back in a moment. On News Radio 1110 KFAB. And welcome back to the show. Jeff Beals and Trenton Maggot at your service. We're brought to you by NAI NP Dodge and DNM Roofing. You guys who listen regularly know Eric Obrumt, the owner of DNM Roofing, does such a great job taking care of their clients. And a lot of times he talks to us about construction related issues here on Grow Omaha. But we highly recommend them. If you're thinking about getting a roof replaced, commercial or residential, call them. If you control or own a commercial building, definitely call them because you cannot beat their preventative maintenance program. dandmroofing.com. Well, as Jeff said, we like to highlight uh, local businesses, and we got some friends of ours in the studio, uh, Damon Gray and Eric Brulette. Uh, welcome, ladies and Good morning. Ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Gentlemen. That's ladies my and gentlemen. lady right there. They're, absolutely. Um, well, there's a company that I like to use, and, and we, we've seen the the expansion of all these quick washes, these um, express washes that we've talked about in our newsletter and everything else we'll talk about later in the show. But, Damon, you started a company called Owner's Pride in 2015. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, Owner's Pride, uh, we started in 2015. The idea was to uh, li- 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 excuse me, literally highlight the idea of the customer is more important than just a car. And uh, it's a detail shop that we always wanted to have to take our cars to. And that was the whole idea behind it. It didn't matter if it was a Mazda, Maserati, Ford, or Ferrari. If that car is important to you, it's important to us. And, and anymore, cars are so hard to get. And uh, whether it's a new car or a used car. And uh, you guys are located over in Millard. Yep, right off 136. And um, how, how many employees do you have now? Um, Owner's Pride itself, they're at the uh, detail shop. We have, oh, we have six. Okay. And what what type of services? It's more than just a hand wash as, as opposed to these membership services and things like that. You have all kinds of different offerings at, at Owner's Pride. Yeah, we do. Uh, We have the hand wash service. Uh, We also have your normal detail service. Uh, One of our uh, specialties is ceramic coatings. Uh, We designed and developed a ceramic coating that was pretty much for the Nebraska weather. I mean, we all know how our weather is in wintertime. You know, you get the sodium chloride, magnesium chloride. Uh, Some counties still even use some beet juice on the roads. Uh, the unique the dreaded beet juice. Exactly. The uh, unique some thing- health aspects to it, though. 
The unique thing about a ceramic coating is, um, unlike wax, it doesn't melt. Uh, definitely highly chemically resistant. Uh, and uh, really, the only way to take it off is vibration. Yeah, and I've, I've had a couple of my cars done at Owner's Pride, um, the ceramic coating. And uh, Eric Brulette, how did you get involved with Owner's Pride? Um, actually, it's completely by chance. Damon and I met at my brother's ex-wife's going away party and kind of realized we knew a lot of the same people. We were in the same space, and our relationship grew from there. And then really, when they wanted to develop ceramic coating, I liked that aspect of it, the chemical side of it, and all of the development side. And that's really where we grew our focus and really took the company into a national chemical sales side of it. Okay, and so what you're talking about is a, is a sister company, if you will, Custom Dealer Solutions, where you've got some other partners as well, and, and Damon's involved. And that, tell us about Custom Dealer Solutions. Yeah, so... Custom Dealer Solutions really came about. I was working in the car dealership world and realized that there was a need for detail training and chemicals within those spaces. And my partner in that is Lowell Sisson. He kind of came out of retirement for a second career. Not really sure if he would uh, do that again. But for me, it's awesome to have that support there and experience. But we go into the dealerships, detail shops, and really train their new employees how to do it because so far in this world, it's been trial by fire in most spaces for detail shops, and it's really setting a lot of the people up to fail. So we want to change that. And what's unique about Custom Dealer Solutions is that you you source everything in the U.S. Yep, right. Both, both companies we have all chemical development, all raw materials, all sourced in the United States, and then produced in the United States. And in the in the day of COVID and supply chain issues, is that a competitive advantage? I would say massively for us. Um, we've never had backstock or have to wait on chemicals. A lot of our competitors, especially in the owner's pride space, haven't been able to get their coatings in because they're making them in Korea or China, bringing them over. So they're all sold out. And we've seen a lot of new growth from that. How, um, so, so what, give, give us an idea, Damon, of owner's pride. Where do you want to take owner's pride, say, in the next three to five years? Yeah, the uh, really unique thing about Owner's Pride is, uh, you know, we're a chemical company, but we're also a chemical company with a detail shop. So it's almost like our own lab uh, here in Omaha. But uh, in saying all that, we have uh, over just about 400 installers across the U.S., uh, Owner's Pride certified installers. Uh, we are shipping to Canada, uh, Mexico, India, uh, and we want to continue to grow that. Uh, that's that's really what we're really shooting for, to be able to offer like what Eric was saying, ceramic coatings that are produced here in the U.S. Um, is a huge advantage. So the, the name Owner's Pride is a great name. Is that the name you use in all the products that you ship out? Yeah, um, or we just simply just have the OP and then Owner's Pride underneath. Owner's Pride reminds me of the old uh, Ocean Pacific yeah uh, brand, sure. but, but uh, everyone loved those T-shirts. Absolutely overpriced, we called it, but. Uh, so th that's that's interesting. And, and so, er Eric, what um, are there any other spinoff type companies that you're looking at doing with with Owners Pride, um, or with Custom Dealer Solutions? Owners Pride, where the idea of franchising it is out there and growing that, and then Custom Dealer Solutions, we're going into distribution in different networks in different areas and shipping it. So a lot of guys will sell stuff off their van into a different dealership, and we want to really grow that warehouse side of it to take away that overhead from those customers and ship it directly to their customer. Is there any training that goes in, along with your products? Um, we do. We have uh, training quarterly. We have people that come in all around from the U.S. Uh, the other training is we do business training. Um, a lot of these detailers don't quite grasp how to, how to really get the most out of social media. Um, there's so many different avenues and there's so many different ways to do it. Uh, and what works in their market. So we talked to them about it. We talked to them about using um, a POS system, CRMs, and how to capture your customers' in <clears throat> information and to be able to use that for marketing. So people locally, people that are listening to this show, and we've got a pretty wide audience, How do they, can they t use your products at home as well? Yeah, absolutely. And so you're located where? We're located on 136 Millard Avenue. Okay. And uh, if you go to ownerspride.com, we have an entire shop of all of our products. Absolutely. Is there anything else you guys want to add or anything that uh, you want people to know about the company? You? 
come on by. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, you know, please stop on by. Uh, I guarantee you the it's not just about the car. It's about the customer service. So Owner's Pride, ladies and gentlemen, check out ownerspride.com. That's uh, Damon Gray and Eric Brulette of Owner's Pride. And uh, give them a, a, a chance and, and uh, check out their services and their products. Well, I appreciate you guys joining us today, and and thank you for your commitment to the Omaha business community. I'm still trying to process what that uh, uh, brother's ex-wife's going away party uh, was like. I can only imagine that that was interesting. <laughs> Your brother would be so proud you brought that up. <laughs> We're next door neighbors, so it's difficult. She had to send her off. <laughs> At any rate, guys, appreciate you joining us. We're going to take our middle of the show break and uh, do our um, half hour news. And then when we come back, we have our commercial real estate development spotlight brought to you by Noddle Companies, in which we'll talk about a new business located along the riverfront in Council Bluffs. All of that and more, you're listening to Jeff Beals and Trenton Magadon Grow Omaha, brought to you by DNM Roofing and NAI NP Dodge on News Radio 1110 KFAB. And we're back, Grow Omaha on News Radio 1110 KFAB, brought to you by DNM Roofing and NAI NP Dodge Commercial Real Estate. Well, this part of the show, right in the middle after the news, is what we call the Real Estate Development Spotlight. And uh, Noddle Companies makes it possible for us. Noddle Companies has tons of developments all over Omaha, various places in the United States, but they're headquartered here. And uh, they're full-service commercial real estate development company. Some of their projects, we talk about Exarban Village a lot. They also have the medical campus at Village Point, the Builders District downtown, Steel Ridge, and the Papillion Gretna area. But today, we're going to talk about their development called River's Edge which is right on the Missouri River on the Iowa side of the uh, Bob Carey Missouri River pedestrian bridge. At any rate, new company called Trivium Life Services is a tenant in the office building there at River's Edge. They occupy the second floor. They have open workspaces with the whole, you know, floor to ceiling glass. So if you're in that building, by the way, you get a killer view of downtown. Unbelievable Omaha. view. And the Missouri River and, and the bridge. And if you haven't been to River's Edge for a while, um, go drive over there and kind of look around. Park the car, walk around a little bit. They just added another residential building to the east. A lot there. of public art over there, too, which is really fun. Yeah, and there's and there's more stuff to come. So that area will just keep redeveloping. I've got a feeling that not only will downtown Omaha really pop after the three riverfront parks are done, River's Edge will benefit, too. No question about it. There's a lot of interaction between them. Yeah, I mean, you could say it's weird to think that a development in the state of Iowa is affected by some parks under development in the state of Nebraska, but they're so close, and with the Missouri River pedestrian bridge there, I think those are all kind of part of it. There's package. a lot more residential options over there in addition to the office. Yeah, and that is your commercial real estate development spotlight brought to you by Noddle Companies. You can find out more about that firm at noddlecompanies.com or their Facebook page. Then also, um, not all companies has Exarban Village and the Interrail. So um, sometimes people, if they want to keep up on that, just go to the Exarban Village or Interrail uh, pages on Facebook. Lots of announcements there so you can kind of keep up what's going on in that development as well. Well, uh, Trenton mentioned this a little bit earlier during the previous segment, but in our weekly Gromaha newsletter, which comes out every Thursday, um, so this week, just a couple of days ago, we always have a section called the big story. And in this week's big story, we talked about car washes and Trenton people keep sending us notes at uh, news at gromaha.com, or they'll send an email to you or me. And they're saying, why are there so many car washes? Absolutely. I mean, and, and I got to admit, doesn't it feel like when you drive around, if there's an empty corner on an intersection, there's a car wash under or construction, two car washes on the same empty corner. And they're not just car washes. They're nicer, upscale car washes. And one thing they all have is the membership component. Absolutely. And I'm, and I'm a big fan of uh, Tommy's Express and the, the modern. If you go to 180th and Dodge right now and you go and you um, check out their services, you can get your floor mats cleaned year round. There's, a, it's, it, there's indoor floor mat cleaning, which is amazing. Um, the the size of the tunnel wash and the the happy uh positive people there but you're you're the, the technology that they use with their license plate readers and 
um, just the quality of the wash and the affordability of it. You can as many times as you want per month. I can understand why people are attracted to this uh, model. Well, you mentioned that new Tommy's car wash at 180th and Dodge it truly just opened within the last couple of weeks. I actually washed my car there on Thursday and uh, love the modernness of it. it yeah, it's 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 uh, these new these new wave of car washes have a lot more amenities and they're also very much into the visual experience. Like they have lighting and, and all sorts of uh, uh, windows and this sort of thing. It's not like the old gas station car wash that you would typically use. Not at all. So to give you an idea about some of these, okay, Trenton mentioned Tommy's express. They've been around for about 40 years out of Michigan. They're now up to 172 locations in 30 States. They have two franchisees here in the Metro area that are opening them like crazy. In addition to the 180th and Dodge one that Trenton just mentioned, they have other ones planned for 204th and Q. There's one under construction. Trenton did this deal at 84th and Highway 370 and Papillion. Um, many more to come. 132nd and, and I Street's been open for a long time, I think 2018. That was their original Tommy's in town, Absolutely, right? Absolutely, yeah. Okay, and then you may have noticed a few other brands. Tidal Wave Auto Spa is out of Georgia. Uh, they started with a Bellevue location. They currently have locations under construction, a couple of them along West Dodge Road at 87th and 120th Street. I know I see their signs on a couple others. Right next to Russell Speeders, so you'll have two right there. Car Wash District. Yeah. Then Rocket Car Wash, another national. They are planning several metro area locations. Um, and then uh, out of Missouri, there's a concept called Club Car Wash. They opened their first Omaha one recently at 72nd and L. They have other locations under construction at 108th and Maple and 72nd and Sorensen Parkway. Okay, so this leads us to the opening question. Why? And, and, and by the way, let me preface the question with this. This is not just an Omaha thing. Uh, when you drive to other cities and dri- or go to other cities and drive around, you see the same thing. Car wash, car wash, car wash. And there are all these membership car washes like Tommy's where you pay one monthly fee if you'd like and you get unlimited washes for the course of the month. So the question is why? Why, why now and why do people seem to love these things so much? Well, I think there's a lot of convenience. I think people have pride in their uh, vehicles like we talked about before with our guests that they number one cars are more expensive it's harder to get cars and people want to maintain their cars and take care of them and this is an easy way to do it not just the stimulus money that's coming in everybody's accounts it sounds like but it just it, it's it's a way to um feel good about cleanliness it's, it's it's a way to feel good about something that you own and that you have invested in and um the, the quality of the cars at, at Tommy's, it's just amazing the technology that's that's involved in it. I think you make a good point when you say that cars are harder to come by these days, so people are compelled to take care of the car that they have. Make them last longer. You know, you go by a new car lot, you don't see very many cars on the lot. And with the chip shortage, the labor shortage, you're just not enough cars. And so people are thinking to themselves, if I'm going to have this car for one, two, or three years longer than I initially anticipated, I, I better take care of it. And then we're Americans, and and the car is an extension of you. I mean, if you have a dirty car, some people think, well, uh, does that reflect poorly on me? But get a load of this. The International Car Wash Association did a study in 2020. And at that time, there were 63,000 car wash locations in the United States uh, that generated a total of $11 billion a year. That number has only gone up with the explosion of membership car washes. But the other thing, too, is it's kind of like the same thing we're seeing in the storage, um, self-storage industry is that it was a very segmented industry, a lot of mom-and-pop facilities. Now there's a lot of roll-ups, and I have clients that I work with that, that do the same thing, is that you're, you're starting to see the, um, the Tommy's Express of the World, um, they're, they're basically going in and they're – They've created a franchise model, and so you don't have um, – you, there's there's quality, service, cleanliness as opposed to not knowing what you're going to get. And so you're, you're seeing a lot of these franchise models coming around. 
So we're going to take our final break of the morning, and you know what comes next, the lightning round by Turner Construction. I'm looking at the list right now, and I'm seeing some pretty good stuff on here that people are going to want to know. A lot of cocktail party ammunition for those discussions this evening. So you're going to want to stay with us. You're listening to Jeff and Trenton on Grow Omaha, brought to you by NAI NP Dodge and DNM Roofing. We'll be back in a moment on News Radio 1110 KFAB. It's the lightning round, brought to you by Turner Construction. The lightning round is where we talk about all sorts of things here on Grow Omaha. Little stuff, but important stuff, things that you can use during conversations at your parties and cocktail receptions this evening. And we thank Turner Construction for making it possible. Do you realize Turner Construction is now the biggest construction company in the entire country? But don't let that size intimidate you. Uh, because here in the Omaha area, they do a lot of small projects, too. Oh, sure. Yeah, they've got the Sarpy County Data Center. You may have heard of it. It's billions of dollars. But they You'll do see s- their signs. Oh, yeah. they do, You see them on, doing a retail space or whatever. So they do the small projects, too, the medium projects. They're very competitive. They're very uh, responsible in the way they treat their employees and their customers and the, the pieces of real estate where they work. And we highly recommend Turner Construction for all of your construction needs. All right, Trenton, Floor and Decor is an 80,000-square-foot retailer, and they, as the name would indicate, sell a lot of flooring, you know, hard yeah. hard surface flooring, and they are going to be building a store near NFM at Rose Blumpkin Drive and Harney Street, 80,000-square-foot uh, store. The approximate start date is January 3rd, Um, they um, are collecting their construction bids right now. So this is going to be pretty exciting. But get a load of this. Floor Decor, we don't have those in Omaha yet. It's out of Atlanta, and they do have 120 locations nationwide. Yeah, absolutely. And and this is – NFM has actually blessed this. And and so, you're you're, you know, they they cross – they'll cross-sell. I mean, they're going to – you're going to see complimentary items. Well, and it's on land that NFM has been using for semi-truck trailer Absolutely. storage. Yeah, and I believe it's a land lease, too. So it'll really clean up that area because that's that, that little area has always been kind of a not-so-visually-desirable place. And so having that there and then some uh, lighter retail closer to Dodge will really kind of brighten that whole area. It, consumers will really benefit from being able to shop at both uh, stores. Absolutely. Okay, next item on the docket. We've got a couple of new retailers going into two of Omaha's nicer shopping centers. The first one is at Village Point. It is Restore Hyper Wellness. It has opened a 2,374-square-foot space at Village Point between Claire's and Bath & Body Works. Restore Hyper Wellness is the number one provider of health and wellness services nationwide. Trent, you can even get cryotherapy and... uh, Red light, ther- red light therapy, that sounds a little saucy. I think I'll let you do that. Okay, I'm, I'm going to actually go for the IV drip therapy. You can have the infrared sauna. Excellent. And then at Regency Court, two new tenants, Valo Wellness Spa plans to open early next year in a 4,200-square-foot space next to Borsheim's and across from William Sonoma. Sounds to me like the old Parso's space. Yes, it does. Probably. And then for the one bridal is a designer bridal boutique that has opened already 1,700 square feet between Love Sack and Garbo's Salon. Welcome. It is That's encouraging because if you think about over the last few months when we talk about new retailers, other than restaurants and entertainment business, we haven't had a lot to report. Absolutely. And, and these companies are, are uh, – Competing with with the internet and and you know there's as you notice there's specialty there are their services or their specialty retailers where people want a high level of customer in person service. Well, everyone likes it when we talk about food and restaurants and all that. So here are a couple. First of all, first of all is Crumble Cookies. Crumble Cookies. This is a national chain that started in Logan, Utah, and they have 264 locations in 36 states. The closest existing locations. Two Omaha are in Kansas City and Sioux Falls, South Dakota. They're going to open a store in the uh, shopping center, the strip center at 168th and Center, southeast corner, the one that has Penn Station subs, Clancy's, First Watch, and Taipei. Uh, close to home. Yeah, it's close to where both 
you and I live, especially you. Absolutely. And so welcome Crumble Cookies to the Omaha Marketplace. And then the Deviled Egg Company, which has been selling eggs. I, I've tried it like a year or two ago at a kiosk in the West Roads Mall, but now they have a permanent location at 18111 Q Street. So basically southwest of 180th in Q. And they sell deviled eggs. They're pretty good. I'm sure there's more than one kind. Ladies and gentlemen, that is what we call a specialty retailer. Yeah, absolutely. Right there. How do you get those online? Well, you probably could, I'm sure. Oh, I'm sure someone will figure it out, pack them in dry ice or whatever. So, Trenton, a couple little restaurant things because we like to talk about restaurants. I know it's been open for a long time, and I believe you did the deal. But this week I tried curry in a hurry. Didn't oh, you, yeah. Didn't absolutely. you do that real yeah, estate? Yeah, down? over on Maple. Yeah. You know what? That's a pretty good place. No, they yeah, good and it's very affordable. It's quick serve Indian food. I, I love Indian food and um, it's nice to have quick serve. Then I was down in the old market and um, I noticed, you know, where the Indian oven used to be, there's another Indian concept. Yeah. I've not tried that. Yet. I have not either. I have to get down and give that a try. All right. Then have you have you been to Wahlburgers yet since they opened? No. Up? Okay, I did it. Um, and I had which which Ivy? The Stony Brook Ivy. Okay. 144th and Stony Brook. And, and I had never, despite all my travels, I had never tried a Wahlburgers in any other city. So it was my first time. I'm okay. Okay. I was not blown away. I was not blown away. Like, you know, we don't have Shake Shack here yet. I think those burgers are better. Um, you know what I've been thinking about lately is, have you been to uh, Popeye's and get, to get the spicy chicken sandwich yet? I have had it. But I got to tell you, when I go to Popeye's, it's very difficult for me not just to get... Uh, the the uh, the three piece good old fried chicken with a side of red beans and rice. Yeah, uh, I hear you. And what do you call what do you call the onion? R B and R and onion loops. Onion loops. I like I like the onion loops. I heard him say that in New Orleans. So you, a lot of people a lot of people know, but some don't that you spent four years in New Orleans. Absolutely, my cholesterol's down for, since then. By the way, hey, are you going to come with me to New Orleans this winter? Are you going to the New Orleans convention for NAI Global? We'll talk about it. Okay. Well, we have a convention for. Uh, NAI Global in New Orleans. I'm going to be doing some uh, leadership training for uh, heads of real estate companies from Jeff all over the world. I love New Orleans, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm going. I'm going to be there for like three or four nights. I think you should come down. Yeah. And we should go to... If not, I'll go to the mouth of the South a couple of times while you're there. If you do go to New Orleans, though, I have one, two, two words for you. Charbroiled. Is that one word? Charbroiled? Charbroiled Hibernated, probably. oysters. Charbroiled oysters in New Orleans are better than anywhere else. It sounds good. Okay, so what uh, um, what types of restaurants besides the two that I just mentioned should we? we okay, to, the, later this week, and I am going to try the committee chop house for the first time. You have not been there? Oh, I've been there four or five times. I know you. That's like when your reaction right there is when you say you haven't watched a movie, and anyone else who has seen that movie is like you haven't seen that movie. So that's kind of the reaction I got for the committee chop house. Let me know what you think. We'll let let the people know. Okay, you've been there what more than once. Oh, probably four times. And and Amy, your significant other and better half, is over there behind the camera. She's a green. Yeah. Okay. So what should I order? Uh, <laughs> it's a steak. There you go. <laughs> Absolutely. But um, they got good seafood. They got good steak. And uh, it's definitely the place to go. And see, this is the only place where you can get cutting-edge restaurant news on the radio like this, folks. So the music is playing, which means that we have to shut up. But we hope you have a great weekend and an even better week. I'm Jeff Beals. And I'm Trenton Maggot. You've been listening to Grow Omaha, brought to you by D&M Roofing, N-A-I-N-P Dodge, and the lightning round by Turner Construction. We'll chat with you next week at 9, right here on News Radio 1110 KFAB. If you like this video, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. And remember, Grow Omaha is not just media. This is a mission. We are trying to build up Omaha and make it an even better place. We can only do that with your help. Share this video with your friends, neighbors, and family.